Hi, my name is Diane Schuster, and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrate the capabilities of CozyRock's SSIS Plus, which is a software suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. These demonstrations were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2005. The CozyRock tasks and components are available for SQL Server Integration Services 2005, 2008, 2008R2, 2012, and 2014 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the Salesforce Source Component, which you can use to integrate or migrate data from the Salesforce service. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. In CozyRock's SSIS Plus product, we provide source and destination components for Salesforce, which support both 32-bit and 64-bit modes. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how easy it is to copy my contacts over from Salesforce to a SQL Server table. I'll show you two different ways to configure the solution. One is good for simple transfers when you don't need to do anything fancy and are only pulling data from one record type. The other method uses the Salesforce Object Query Language, or SOQL, and is good for handling more complex data operations. Then I'll show you a limitation of the Salesforce API and talk about some workarounds to circumvent that limitation. The first thing we need to do is add Salesforce Source to our SSIS toolbox. So we right mouse click somewhere in open space in the toolbox and we go down to choose items and then we go to SSIS data flow items. Scroll down and find the Salesforce Source. Check in the checkbox and you can see that it's a CozyRock SSIS Plus library component. Click OK. And now you can see that Salesforce Source has been added to our toolbox. Now I'm going to show you how to configure the Salesforce Source component. So we start by configuring the Connection Manager. Set up a new connection. Scroll down and find S-Force. Now we need to type in our credentials. And we'll test the connection, and that's good. Now we drag the Salesforce source component onto our canvas. We'll go in and configure this. Choose the connection manager that we just set up. Now we'll go to Component Properties, and I want to point out the Input Type field. You have a choice of Statement or Object, and the default is Object. Right now I'm going to show you how to configure the package using the Input Type of Object. And then we have to choose the actual object that we want to uh, extract from the Salesforce service, and we're going to choose Contact. So I'm going to be importing or transferring over uh, 27 contacts and 13 fields from those contacts. If we wanted to do some filtering on some fields, we would use some SOQL statements here. Now we'll go take a look at the column mappings. Every single field from the contact object in Salesforce has been mapped. However, we only want to use 13 of the fields. So we go to the Input and Output Properties, and we'll go to Output Columns, and I'll remove the columns that I don't want to transfer over. I just finished deleting all of the columns, except for the 13 that I want to transfer over. We go back to take another look at the column mappings, and now you can see that in the available output columns, we only have the 13 columns that I actually want to transfer over. Now we'll connect the two components. Now we're going to configure the OLEDB destination component, which is how we're going to write our data into the SQL Server database. So it's already selected the correct connection manager, and now we'll select the correct table. 
and we'll go look at the mappings. Looks like all of the available input columns have been mapped successfully based on the name. We do have a field defined in the table called name that is not in the contact object coming from Salesforce, so it's okay that that field has not been mapped. Now we're going to set up a data viewer so we can see the actual data that we're going to be transferring when we execute this. And now we can execute. And there you see our data pops up in the grid. We'll detach it so it can complete. And I want you to notice that the email field in the very first contact that we're processing is null. So there's no data there and I want you to hold that thought so I can show you something in a little bit. Now I'll show you how to set things up using the input type of statement. So we'll go in and configure our Salesforce source component. Select the correct connection manager. Go take a look at component properties. And here's our input type, which again defaulted to object, so we're going to change it to statement. Now we go in and, and type in our statement using the SOQL language, which is Salesforce Object Query Language. And the first field that we would like to get is actually coming from a different record in Salesforce called Account. So we want to get the account name from there, which is why we had to type it with the qualifier account before the dot name. And then the rest of the fields are coming right out of the contact record. And see, we're saying we want email. So remember that. I showed you that it was empty in the very first record of the contacts. We'll go take a look at the column mappings now. And look, we don't have all of the fields from the contacts anymore. We've narrowed it down, but we only have five, and we actually typed in six fields that we wanted to get. So it did carry over the account.name field that's coming from the account record. But we lost our email field. And again, that's because the very first record does not have anything filled in in that field. And therefore, Salesforce will not pass us any information about that field, and it doesn't end up getting set up. I'm going to show you a workaround in a moment to get around that problem. And there are actually three workarounds that are documented on the Cozy Rock website. Now I'm going to show you the workaround that's listed as option three on the Cozy Rock website. We go into Input and Output Properties, click on External Columns, and we add the column that we're missing, which is Email. And then we need to go set the correct data type, which is Unicode String in this case. And now we go to Output Columns, and we'll add the column to the Output Columns also. And again, select Unicode String for the data type. Now let's go into the column mappings again. And you can see email has been added to both the available external columns as well as the available output columns, so we map them together. And we'll go in and make sure the mappings are all correct in the OLEDB destination component. Tell them to map based on the column names. Click OK, and now we're going to go back in and check everything. We'll go to Mappings. And sure enough, that's our email field, and it's already mapped for us. So we can close this, and now we're ready to execute. And so we have success. We can stop debugging. Now we can look at the actual results in our table. 
and as you can see the account.name field did get transferred over that was a relationship and that field came over from the account record and you can see we also got our email addresses in there for the records that do have an email address I want to show you our website where we describe how to include the missing columns when using an SOQL statement. If you go to the Salesforce source documentation and scroll to almost the bottom of the page, you'll see the three options described there. In summary, I have shown how easy it is to migrate data from a Salesforce database to a SQL Server table using CozyRock's Salesforce source component. I showed you how simple it is to configure a transfer using an input type of object. Then I showed you how to use an input type of statement so you can use SOQL to perform more complex operations. I also showed you the limitations of the Salesforce API and one way to work around that limitation with more workarounds described in the Salesforce source documentation on the Cozy Rock website. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. And that concludes this demo.